Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you guys here. Uh, hope everyone is having a good conference so far uh, at the back end of the second day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will make a promise that this panel is going to be the most fast paced, dynamic panel <laughs> of the day. I hope uh, that's not too much to no, it's, expect. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine, yes. All right. <laughs> so, as a background to this panel, um, Raoul Sud, we spoke last year at MetaNext just when it was announced that A16Z had invested $40 million into World Sud's NFT project that was based on a robot cockfighting NFT game. Uh, and obviously since then, a lot of things have happened in the, in the Web3 uh, product, and it will be interesting to talk a little bit about the journey from last year to this year. Also, uh, we're going to go deep, dive into uh, uh, kind of the um, evolve, uh, like AI and uh, what's happening in ChatGTP and how you are developing the company. But without going too far here today, I want to start off, Raul. You were born, now you're here. What happened in between? <laughs> As an introduction. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you know, I, I've spent most of my career in um, gaming and entertainment. And uh, I've had um, sort of multiple gaming companies um, that... Uh, uh, I guess, lucky enough, was acquired by a larger company. So my first company was acquired by HP. It was a high-end gaming PC company. Then I got deeply involved with a VR, AR company based out of Montreal. And, um, and they, they're called Vervana. They were acquired by Apple uh, in 2017. I was also the founder of Microsoft Ventures. Started that, ran it for a few years. Then I left to start Unicorn which uh, was an esports betting company, amazing company, uh, acquired by Entain in 2021. And now I'm the CEO and co-founder of Irreverent Labs. Great, brilliant, Roland. Just to uh, kind of uh, give a little bit more context to the audience here, we mentioned the uh, robot cockfighting NFT game, uh, Mecha Fight Club, uh, here of course this is part of Irreverent Labs, but would you like to just give an introduction as well to Irreverent Labs and what you do. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, Irreverent Labs is a, uh, a deep tech company. Um, we're using AI to create automated entertainment. Um, we raised $45 million uh, in uh, 2021 uh, with A16Z um, and as our lead and a, and a few other really interesting people. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're making it available for anybody to create uh, 3D animations or beautiful animations using text and 2D images. So think of it like um, chat GPT, but creating animations, full, full on animations. And we're using those animations to, um, we're showcasing the technology in Mecha Fight Club, which is this futuristic cockfighting game based in the year 2140. Yes. And obviously, we have to dive in, uh, dive in a little bit more. For those of you who were not here last year, uh, can you talk a little bit more about Mecha Fight Club, this, uh, the robot cockfighting NFT game? It's just totally fascinating to me, if you want to dive, in, dive into it a little bit more. Yeah, sure. Um, so what's interesting about gaming in general now is it, it, it's obviously there's, gaming is very popular. Um, but you know, as as you th think about what could make a game really interesting, it's it's when you it, it's when you introduce the ability to have uh, emotional connections or even just like ownership in a game. So um, for us, you know, I wanted to create a game where uh, the players have agency in the characters in the game and they have ownership of those characters. Um, and and the idea is that we're creating a fighting game where every character in the game is an artificially intelligent NPC. Um, that you own, and, and they become increasingly smarter and unique over time based on the user uh, training these cocks and hens to fight, to dance, to do different things um, in the coctagon. Um, but, but, you know, uh, ultimately what we're doing is, is, is we're creating, uh, a, you know, a character like a pet, like a Tamagotchi on steroids, and, and you're, 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 you're getting emotionally connected to it because over time, you know, their earnings go up and they, you know, some of them become legendary and, um, and, and, and to me that's sort of the future of entertainment. And there's no actual user input controlling the characters. Right. It's, it's all driven by AI. Right, right, right. And so last year when we spoke, uh, it was just at the back end of the crypto summer. Uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of projects were well funded, uh, including yourself, uh, of course. And since then, we've entered a quite deep uh, crypto winter. Um, FTX didn't help, of course, the collapse uh, that uh, caused some collateral damage to the entire ecosystem. 
how has this affected you guys? And um, how has this affected your own belief of the future of Web3? Well, you know, I've been in the space for a long time. <laughs> I've seen four bull bear markets. Uh, you know, U Unicorn started building on blockchain in 2014. Um, I, I've been a, a believer and uh, a real deep Bitcoin advocate since 2013. And, um, and so I've seen this. Um, you know, unfortunately, every bull bear market brings on a, a much bigger audience and a much bigger market, but it also brings on a lot more opportunists and scammers and like shitty people. Um, <laughs> Like 97, 98% of the projects created during these bull markets are either scams or just garbage or going to fail. Um, but ultimately, you know, if you're a builder, uh, uh, there are really good entrepreneurs in the space. Believe it or not, there are. There are honest people that are, that are building really great products and that see the potential of how this technology can be leveraged in meaningful ways. And so, um, you know, we, we, just, we just go heads down and keep building. The one thing that changed for us was our monetization uh, st strategy. So originally we were going to launch with, a f with Mecha Fight Club and, and a full in-game economy. Now what we decided is, um, and then we we're gonna make our tools available eventually. Now what we decided is we're, we're going to launch the tool, the creator tool to create these animations and monetize that, and then, uh, and then make the game free to play for now, um, and then eventually bring in the economy and that sort of thing into the game. Right, right, right. So the, uh, what's happening essentially now, it's uh, kind of like uh, the, the industry is being cleared out of these kind of like 95, 98% of products that just didn't end up bringing value to the industry, basically. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, when, when you drag somebody like Tom Brady and, you know, the FTX arena in Miami and all of that mainstream stuff into a, a giant scam, it, it brings out the ire of the regulators to the point where they're almost embarrassed for not catching it ahead of time. And what they do is, is they react by going after really good American companies like Coinbase. Like, wh why would you do that? Yeah. Like, wh why, why is it that they, that they uh, focus their ire on Coinbase, Bittrex, and Kraken, when they sh and all they're doing is they're, they're just going to spawn more bah Bohemian you know, FTX-type uh, companies if, uh, if, they, if they push innovation out of this country. That has to stop. Like, they have to actually work with these guys, help them innovate, and strengthen them, not weaken them. Otherwise, we're, we're completely screwed. Right, right. And it seems like today, all the rave is AI. Um, we don't hear too much about the, uh, the, the kind of web, like, there's not that many discussions happening anymore, or at least right, not right now, on the Web3 space. But AI is all the rave at the moment. Why do you think, um, will this cycle not repeat itself on the AI side? Like, we are clearly in, a, in an oh, AI cycle. Do you think we'll eventually end up in an AI winter? Listen, I, I've always sort of been a, a little bit ahead of what's happening in the market, luckily, I guess. And the reason we were able to raise what we did in 2021 was because of what we're building with AI. Um, uh, you know, A16Z has a very strong vision of the future. But at the time when we were building um, our tool, there was no term as generative AI. We just happened to be creating automated entertainment, which is now considered generative AI. Um, a lot of companies are going to come out saying they're an AI company, but they're not. They're either building on top of ChatGPT, uh, uh, using their foundation, using you know the ChatGPT foundation, or or they uh, they're they're using Mechanical Turks or something like that, calling themselves AI. This has happened in the past as well, um, and so you'll probably see some of that. But I can tell you, the the VCs in this space are extremely smart, and they 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 know what to look for. Um, we're building our own found foundation models, and um, the compute is exorbitant. It's, it's, it's like the biggest, how do I say, the biggest hurdle for any startup to get into the space. Trying to build a foundation model and the GPU compute, trying to get allocation of GPUs from NVIDIA, um, you know, dealing with the cloud costs, it's, it's nuts. It's not just something you can just go do. Right, right. So th this, these are the limitations within the uh, kind of AI field right now. It's just, uh, it's just very difficult to actually get the computing power. Plus the talent. Like, yeah. like we, we, we just hired the uh, um, uh, ex-chief uh, scientist at Microsoft and, uh, you know, a few other really notable people in the space. There's not a lot of these people around. Um, and uh, we were able to do that because my partner is just an amazing, you know, genius who's worked in this space for a long time and has a lot of friends. And so uh, finding the talent and getting the compute are the two biggest hurdles. Once you get past that, though, you can do some pretty awesome stuff. Right, yeah. right. 
I mean, the hype word of the year so far, obviously, is uh, ChatGPT and the powers of ChatGPT and how it's going to change the world and so on and so forth. Um, do you think uh, is is the product overhyped at this stage, or do you think it is actually we are on a path to literally change the world? I mean, it's definitely not overhyped if you've used it. Yeah. Um, you know, like if you're a writer or a journalist, you should be scared. Uh, you know, if you think that it could replace you. However, if you think about it as how do I use it to augment my work, um, you know, to 10x me, the, 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 the concept of ChatGPT is very interesting. Um, I've been playing with it with Bing. It's super cool when you, when, when you, when you combine ChatGPT with, with uh, current data, like actual, you know, real data on real people, it kind of gets a little scary. Now, Bing just lobotomized the whole thing again uh, because it was getting a little really wild like the with current information and also Bing tends not to have the freshest data but imagine when Google does it I I just I cannot imagine where this is going to end up going but yeah chat GPT is unbelievable I use it often um, you know for like to help me with with mind block or if I'm writing an email or something I need to you know put together a proposal or whatever I use it and then I just go in and edit it in my own voice it's, it's cool you know right right it seems today, though, that ChatGTP is more like a productivity a tool. And I, I spoke to um, a, a tech friend of mine in, in London the other week who, who said, you know, if, you are, if your English on, is on a like, 3 out of 10 type of level, yep. ChatGTP will bring it up to a 5 out of 10. But it's not going to uh, bring, it, bring your English up to a 10 out of 10 in, in terms of writing. So like uh, um, human originality and so on uh, still reigns supreme. So it seems the, the, the prospect today is more that um, ChatGPT is an assistant to make you know, your tools okay, so to say. Is well, you know, if you, if you keep probing, like yeah. if, you, if you ask it one question, sure. But, but if you continue to ask con or add context to that question, uh, the original question, then it gets really interesting. Like right. try writing a children's storybook with it. It's pretty wild, right? I, yeah. I, I, I know this... Um, this story about a particular person who 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 ran into trouble with the law and uh, you know and and so like uh, using Bing I I I I I asked it a question about a particular person and it um, you know brought up this person and it started to like make comments about what they thought of the person it was it was unbelievable <laughs> right and then you go in deeper and then it just gets even worse and then uh, I did another thing where I searched someone else and it picked someone they picked the right person but then it also said hey it could also be this person and the other person was like some criminal doctor out of you know New Jersey or something like that right and the right. and the real guy is somewhere in Calgary and it's it's th that's when you start to get uh, you know, misinformation being used uh, by this AI, that could be a little concerning, I think. Yeah, yeah. And even uh, Google launched their own version of ChatGPT, and in the PR, in the press release, the question it was asked in the PR, it answered not the correct uh, answer, right? It was something about the comment discovered, and it actually didn't provide the right answer. Google didn't discover it themselves, the PR team, which resulted in the stock price plunging like 8%. So there's still that issue, right, of it's being so confident to giving an answer, but actually sometimes it's difficult to trust it. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to trust it. Um, yeah. But, you know, I think in terms of factual information or current information, Google search engine is pretty pretty strong. Um, it, this is this is just the beginning. Like, I think Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, said it well, uh, you know, that um, this, this will make Google come out and dance, and we want to be known as the company that made them dance, and I think yeah. that's exactly what's happening right now. The, the, I, I mean, I live in the tech uh, ecosystem. I see people getting laid off like crazy right now. Amazon, massive layoffs. Google, Microsoft, Meta, they're all laying people off, but not in the, not in the wrong areas. Like, they're laying off uh, in the areas that are a little bit sort of uh, inefficient, uh, right. but, they're, but they're really hard focusing on this, uh, on this space. And, um, and AI is definitely here to stay, uh, right. uh, and we'll, we'll see where it goes, yeah. So, so we talked about kind of text-to-chat, which is uh, ChatGPT. Um, obviously, a text-to-image uh, uh, text of uh, Midway, for example, became popular in the early 2022 as well. Funnily enough, the AI still have a really hard time to render teeth and fingers for some reason. Yeah. Um, and uh, you talk about the... Uh, 
tool that you are building, which is uh, text to animation, yeah. essentially. So actually moving footage uh, based on your text uh, input. Can you talk more about that uh, tool that you are building? And this seems to be something that doesn't exist today, right? No, it doesn't exist. Like today, there's text to 3D, which is like uh, you can create an ice cream cone or something and watch it spin around. Whoopee, right? I mean, I can yeah. go to the Unity store and buy an asset for 30 cents. So why would I waste compute on that? But um, imagine being able to create a one-minute movie like a like a beautiful movie on anything um, that's what we're creating and uh, and it's funny it works it's it's generative like it it sort of generates stuff based on like you can say um, create me a mid-century cafe in the middle of uh, Times Square right and it will it will create this environment and then you could say I would like this person and this person to walk in and get a cup of coffee you upload the 2d images of the people and then boom it will do it right um, it's uh, it's, it's kind of neat like you know it's not perfect um, but it that, that's sort of the vision of what we're creating and we should have a early version of this for people to play with in like the May June time frame, right. uh, we're going to make it public and um, and uh, you know. And, and what what will be the purpose of this product? What do you think uh, creators oh, will be able to do with uh, it, this? Yeah. I say more than just playing around with it. Uh, let's say. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can use it like a, a you know for movie scripts, or if you want to create a presentation, or if you want to create a card for your wife, or uh, or you know a <laughs> game like Mecha Fight Club, right? If you you know we're gonna the tools that we're creating. Um, are, are being used in Mecca Fight Club and, and uh, we're going to make some of the tools that we're using in Mecca Fight Club uh, also available through this, uh, through this uh, Irreverent Labs um, uh, company. So um, yeah, so we're using AI in a number of different ways in the game and we want to take those tools and make it available to other people because that's where the money is. Honestly, like if we want to build an economy under this game, uh, which we do, you cannot, you cannot just produce a token out of thin air and say, here you go, you just earned a token because the minute your user growth stagnates, the whole thing falls apart like a Ponzi scheme. So you need fiat coming into the system and you also, you know, a real economy needs human output. Um, my, my, my partner has built a really, really amazing white paper on how to build in-game economies and, um, and that's the key. The key that we're, we'll be able to take uh, fiat coming into our AI tools and, and some of it, not all of it, and plug it into the game economy. It's just, it's just going to be awesome. Yeah. Interesting. I, I have another question for you. I was speaking to, uh, um, to Todd of Evolution, a friend of mine. We were debating whether these um, large language models um, are eventually going to become commoditized or if they will be kind of like one LLM that will always stay uh, kind of on top of the others, let's say. So, for example, right now, ChatGTP is the language model, large language model of choice. And um, Google is launching their own, uh, Amazon potentially, other companies. Um, and uh, in the future, you would imagine that uh, companies will kind of one-up each other by adding more parameters and... Uh, uh, and, and, and making them better, so to say. But this is uh, obviously a very expensive process to train the data each time. Like, you can't really yeah, like build on the same model, right? You have to kind of, uh, every time you, you start a new model, you have to start from scratch, right? Will, the, will there be one dominant LLM, or will there I be... I mean, I, I've seen, uh, you know, or like GPT-4. Right now we're using right. GPT-3. GPT-4 is like 10x GPT-3. Yeah. And, and the reason they did the deal with Microsoft, they did a $10 billion deal with Microsoft, is because the cloud computing costs are just nuts. Like for us yeah. to do one round of training of uh, you know a bunch of cockfights is uh, uh, half a million dollars <laughs> in compute, <laughs> right? right? Uh, I mean, come on, that's insane. And so we're, we're, we're working with NVIDIA, thankfully, um, you know, through old relationships and that sort of thing, we're able to get allocation of GPUs and, uh, and trying to sort of build out the uh, capability to do this at a, at a much lower price. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, one chat GPT inquiry is probably a couple cents. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, if you're creating, a, imagine the cost of creating a one minute movie, what that would be. Um, this is why we, we need like good monetization models and things like that right. to make it work. So if the AI companies are fighting for computing power, then it's a good bet to buy Amazon stock today. Yeah, I would, say, I would say yeah. Amazon, I would <laughs> say um, Microsoft, but, but the best would be probably not, uh, NVIDIA. I uh, really yeah. believe that Jensen will be the most powerful, you know, most powerful person in the world in five years because of the GPU yeah. compute, yeah. yeah. He knows it, yeah. This, this is not the investment <laughs> advice. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. I have a final question for you today, uh, Raul. Um, so Chris Grove, he, uh, he taught me the concept of zero inbox. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
the zero inbox concept is what we all as professionals strive for. At the end of the week, we want our inbox to be empty. It's a never-ending battle. Some of battle, us at the basically. end of the day, but yes. <laughs> it's a never-ending battle. And, and Chris, he talks about how do you get to zero inbox? And the best way to get to zero inbox is just to stop replying to your emails, basically, because then you will not get more replies. Now, on the AI side, recently a tool was launched I call Ellie that is able to reply to your emails automatically. So it will understand the email, it will understand your own writing style based on your history and your inbox and your outbox, and it will be able to um, uh, uh, intelligently reply to emails. So my question to you then is, is Ellie a source for zero inbox, or is it potentially the cause of infinite inbox, considering that now you will reply to all emails and get an infinite amount of replies back? I, I think it's probably, um, I, 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 don't, I, I don't look at it as black and white as that. I think it's dangerous to do that, uh, only because there are, um, right now, the, the amount, uh, like cybersecurity is probably the biggest thing everyone should fear at the moment, or they should be focusing on, um, because people are less concerned about their privacy these days. Uh, for whatever reason, young people don't care, right? They'll post images of whatever they want on TikTok and shit like that, not worry about location tracking and that sort of thing. So what's really important for the future is your own personal cybersecurity, your personal password management and things like that. And when you're giving an AI access to your email and it's analyzing what you're doing, you know, at some point somebody could hack that and say, look for seed phrases, look for anything, you know, bank accounts and stuff like that. And um, so I would be really careful about how you use AI for things like that. I would much rather just manually draft it. Um, yeah, and, uh, and so is it, is it your, your question was, does it mean like infinite inbox? I think it just means infinite problems if you have a robot going into your email responding to people that you don't know at random. I think it's dangerous. Right, right, right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Uh, well, great to have you back here at Tiger Minx, and thank you guys as well for chiming in today. Have a good rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.